First Porto Bra, everyone. You can do it from a chair, you can do it, you can stand up and do it. You can do First Porto Bra from just about anywhere. You can sit in on the floor and do First Porto Bra. That's the beauty of First Porto Bra. Sometimes it gets away from you and you end up in Third Porto Bra. That's okay too. Melanger. Let's talk. Okay. So uh, I've been a you know a little bit hard on the institutions. So I want to say this: there are some very very good ethical, talented people working within the institutions. Uh, I know that because they talk to me. <laughs> they reach out, and I talk to them. And you know, for now, it has to remain anonymous because. Now here's the thing about them. They, the, here's the tragedy of having really good people, working ethical people, talented people, knowledgeable people, working in these unethical institutions. I mean, the leadership is to some extent unethical. And again, I, I hate painting, I, I don't like speaking in absolutes because that's just not true. I'm not saying all the leadership is, is, is bad. And some of the people I'm talking about are in leadership positions. But because of the political or social pressure, they, are, they feel unable to tell the truth or to teach the truth, which is even worse, right? Because it's one thing to keep one's thoughts to oneself. It's another thing to keep, for a teacher to keep their knowledge to themselves, which would absolutely benefit the students. So I just want to publicly express my support for these people and their plight because they want to do a great job and they're capable of it. But if they do it, they risk getting, uh, you know, canceled. This is the tragedy of that ideology because you have very capable people who just simply are unwilling to have, uh, to be unfairly um, maligned in public from expressing their talent and their ethics and everything else. So they kind of have to try to smuggle in this good information through uh, you sort of bullshit euphemistic language, you know, uh, instead of just saying, here's what you need to know if you want to be a dancer, right? So I want to express my support for these people and and by supporting them, and, and again, one of the benefits of studying on our institute, and even if you interact with me online, uh, it, you can do it anonymously, if that's what your circumstances require, until there's a big enough community around Ballet Conrad to where then you will be free to express yourself honestly. And that's the whole point, right, is to create a large enough community, which it's growing quite rapidly, um, to where, yeah, there's enough numbers to where you can feel comfortable expressing yourself. That's, that's the goal. I mean, that's really what I'm doing right now. You know, and it, obviously it's education and art and all that, but the, the real objective here is to create a community where you can honestly express yourself. And, and where there's disagreement, we have conversations about it. And we figure it out, you know, to where it doesn't end up with this, uh, you know, this totally unproductive, you know, self-destructive way of, of existing with each other. So, again, I mean, that's the benefit and, and the, so the, the egalitarian nature of our institute, that you can just get the information you need and figure out how to, how to integrate it into your situation. And I'm always here to um, give some advice or offer some suggestions as to how best to do that. Because right now what we have also, I mean, a, a much more heartbreaking situation is students are trying to navigate this on their own. You know, we're talking about teenagers who are in ballet schools and they're, you know, they've, they're working the classes and they're trying to in, integrate placement into their classes so that they can improve. And by, by the way, that makes the teacher who didn't do anything uh, or who's preventing them, let me try to say this again, students are doing the work intellectually and physically at home, right? the teachers who are trying to discourage them from doing it are going to be made to look better because of the students work 
something the teacher didn't earn. Take the benefit. Your students, those students are doing the work. Allow them to do the work. So I haven't decided how I'm going to exactly support these students, but I'm definitely going to do it. And um, my advice is that when you see a student working on placement, allow them to do it. Because it's going to benefit everybody around them, including the teacher, including the school. If it turns out that that's not what happens, then I'm going to have to tighten the screws a little bit harder, uh, which I don't have a problem doing. So for those of you in the institutions, I, I feel your pain, believe me. I spent, I spent a year in New York and it's, I know what you're feeling. Um, and I'm here to support you in every way that I can and that goes for students in the institutions as well. And you know, we'll keep it quiet if that's what's necessary for now. But this is happening and those institutions would be wise to embrace it and benefit from it. I'll leave it there.